Hello everyone, my name is Miguel and I teach interpreting and translation at the University of Bath here in the UK. And I also teach Chinese to English translation from time to time. And I do contribute also to a course we have on editing and proofreading. So today I would like to give you a little taster of what you might be learning on the MA in translation with business interpreting, more specifically in the editing and proofreading unit that we have in the first semester of this program. So I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to share with you a text translation rather of a speech made by President Xi Jinping in 2015. So it's a slightly old text but it's still linguistically relevant because what I'd like to do today with you is to go through the translation of the Chinese and see where we could make the English sound a little bit more idiomatic. So if we go to the first paragraph here, we've got time flies, year 2014 is coming to an end. Now, the first thing we need to make sure in an English translation is to make sure that we've got the articles, the tense and the grammar correct. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a the here because year 2014 needs an article. We're talking about a specific year, so we need that the there. So the year 2014 is coming to an end. The next thing I've highlighted is this expression here. So in this turn of the year. Now that gets across the meaning in English, but it doesn't sound particularly natural in English. So if you go to political speeches made by British politicians or Australian or American politicians, they normally wouldn't say this. They would say, as we usher in the new year. So I might change that to as we usher in. The new year. That sounds much more natural in English. So then he goes on to say, I now extend my best wishes to people of all ethnic groups in China and other parts of uh, China and the world. Now, at the very end, he says, as well as to friends in other countries and regions in the world. Fine, grammatically, it's correct. But again, if you want to add a bit of rhythm, a bit of flow to the English text, it might sound better to say across the world. And not only have we added a bit of rhythm there, we're also emphasizing that wherever you are in the world, President Xi Jinping sends, sends you his best wishes. So that provides a bit of emphasis as well as a bit of rhythm. Now, if we move to the next paragraph, as I said, we need to make sure that the tense is correct. So here you've got a sentence which says, 2014 is an unforgettable year should be was an unforgettable year because it's in the past tense. So this is something that's already finished, it's over. Now we're in 2015 and therefore we need the past tense there. Now here we move on to territory which is a bit more about Chinglish and repetition and flow. So in the Chinese you've got tui jin gai ge, and then later on you've got ji ji tui dong, jing ji shi hui fa zhan. Now in English, they translated it as pushed forward reforms and then later on pushed forward economic and social development. While that's not wrong, it would first of all sound better to change it to a different expression in English to make it sound more natural. And secondly, in order to avoid repetition, you might want to use two different turns of phrase here and here. So again, if you look at speeches made by British politicians, for example, you very re rarely hear them say, we pushed forward reforms. They usually say, we pushed through reforms. So that would be a better preposition to use in that context. We pushed forward reforms with strong commitment. We overcame many hardships. Again, that's another expression that comes across as a little bit Chinglish, the word hardship. We don't use it a lot in English. It may sound better to say, we overcame numerous difficulties or something like that. Now, this next sentence here, many of which are closely associated with the interests of the general public, is this uh, 许多改革, 
So this sentence in Chinese does sound a little bit stilted in English. It's a close translation of the Chinese, but it doesn't sound very natural. So again, if you go to a speech made by David Cameron or Theresa May or subsequent prime ministers, you will often see that they use expressions like close to the hearts of the British people or speak to the concerns of the British people or even these are issues that matter to the British people. So I might change it to something like that. You also need to remember that measures aren't really anything to do with the people or the people can't really relate to measures. So we would have to change the sentence a little bit and say, introduced a series of important reform measures which speak to the concerns of the British public, or the Chinese public in this case. That would sound much more natural in English and also it's made the text shorter, which is always good. We worked to adapt to the new normal of economic growth. Often in English, you will see the expression we worked towards adapting. So we need to change that to an ing verb there, add an ing on the end. Now we come back to this next pushed forward. In order to avoid saying pushed through again, maybe we can change the verb to something else. And I would probably use drive. But in order to link the two sentences together better, again, we can use an ing ending on the verb. So let's see if that sentence reads well now. We worked towards adapting to the new normal of economic growth, driving economic and social development, resulting in further improvement of people's lives. To me, that sounds much more natural in English. But I think maybe we can change this lives to livelihoods. And that will make it even better. So we work towards adapting to the new normal of economic growth, driving economic and social development, resulting in further improvement in people's livelihoods. So that sounds to me like a much more natural English text. Now, there are many more things we could do to this text to make it sound more natural or more idiomatic. That's all I have time to talk to you about today. But I hope this has given you an idea of some of the things that we might talk about in a proofreading and editing class to make our target text or our uh, text in English a little bit more natural sounding in English. The reason why I wanted to talk to you about editing and proofreading on our programs is because a lot of our graduates end up working for companies in mainland China, in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other parts of the world. And even though sometimes their job description is translator or interpreter at a particular company, we found that a lot of our graduates have to work on proofreading and editing for a large percentage of the time, which means that they have to make sure that the different texts that have been translated are ready to be published, on a website or on a newsletter, etc., or even writing um, letters to shareholders for their companies. So editing and proofreading is going to be a very important skill um, in these jobs for our graduates. The second thing that's important to remember is that with the advantage of technology that we're seeing, for example, in the field of artificial intelligence, certain types of translation can be done by machines now but you still need a human being to do the final proof or the final edit to make sure that everything's correct. And so this sort of skill will continue to be very relevant in the future, even with the development of artificial intelligence or softwares to help us translate in our work. So I hope this has been useful and I hope that it's provided a bit of food for thought in terms of the things that you have to look out for when you're editing and proofreading. And hopefully this will be a very relevant skill for all of you in the future. Thank you.